In this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm gonna share with you how to go about using Designer to turn existing content into professional looking eBooks. So keep on watching this video. Hi, my name's Aurelius and on this channel, I make videos on how to start and grow a digital products business. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below. Turn on notifications too, so you'll be the first to know of any new videos I post up here on my channel. All right, so with this tutorial, I'm gonna head onto my screen so I can show you exactly how to go about using Using designer to create your own ebooks. Here's an ebook I created in just a matter of minutes. It's called Self Help 101. Of course, this is just for demonstration purposes. I basically took a few of my popular posts on my blog and turned it or repurposed it into this ebook format that you see. As you can see, it's nicely formatted. So this is something that you'll be creating uh, right now using Designer. Now, if you're not familiar with Designer at all, and if you just stumbled upon this video by searching how to create a, an ebook, what I wanna share with you is that Designer simply repurposes any existing content that you may have. So let's say from blog posts as it shows here, or perhaps a podcast, videos that you may have, PDFs that are sitting on your hard drive, or show notes, dynamic flipbooks, transcripts, and other things from your web pages. Now, this doesn't mean that you can just take anyone's content and then turn it into an ebook. Only if you have, of course, the rights to that. If you're the copyright owner, then yes, you can do this, but I'm not saying to just copy someone else's content and then turning it or making your own eBooks out of it. What you wanna do is repurpose existing content that you have personally written or created yourself. Now, at the time of this recording, if we go to the pricing page, if you haven't, of course, got your copy or your access to designer, uh, this is the current state of the pricing plans. It's $29 per month. However, don't get turned off because if you look below this video, in the description box, there's a special offer, lifetime access for just $27. And if you use my link, I will also offer you a bonus package of 300 articles that you can actually reuse and repurpose as your own. This is called private label rights. So you're granted the license to reuse this. And my team and I have actually written this, uh, this set of uh, articles for you. So there's 300 in there in a range of categories. So look down below in the description, for more info on that and the steps that you need to take so that you can gain access to these 300 PLR articles. Going to, if you're using my link, you'll end up on a page that looks like this. This is the older sales page. I'm not sure why it still shows the older one, perhaps because of this lifetime access here, but you can see now you can buy it for $27 lifetime license. All right, so with that said, once you do have access, what you wanna do is log into the dashboard. This is what you'll see. You'll see my past project here. What you wanna do first is to start a new project. That's always the first step. I'm only on the lifetime membership at $27, so you can see the options that are enabled and the ones that are disabled, the ones that are basically grayed out and has this lock icon. The ones that you can use are things like import from a blog posts or a URL. You can import from a Word doc. I do have a, another tutorial on using designer and just uh, the general guide on how to use it. And if you wanna learn more on that or perhaps watch it after that, I do have a link. So I'll link it up just up here. You can also import it from a Google doc or you can start one from one of their existing templates or start from scratch or import from your Facebook page. And that's an interesting one actually. I haven't really used the import from Facebook page, but if you do have a Facebook page where you've been posting content regularly, perhaps you wanna turn those Facebook posts into an ebook. That's a great idea to repurpose anyway, which you can then use to build an email list, create lead magnets out of, or perhaps uh, sell an ebook, which is what the whole purpose of designer is anyway. And for you to be able to sell an ebook or give it away, this will help you save time in that process. Otherwise you're going to have to design it yourself. All right, so let's start by importing from blog posts since I wanna focus on this particular feature in this demonstration and video tutorial. So let's go ahead and import from blog posts. The first thing you're going to wanna do is prepare a list of all the blog posts that you actually want to include for this ebook that you're creating. Now, of course, you wanna theme it. 
depending on what you're creating. If it is a lead magnet, you wanna create something like five tips or five secrets to gaining more traffic, or five tips or five self-help tips, whatever it may be, you wanna create a theme out of it. It is kind of out of the scope of this video tutorial. So you do need an idea of what you're going to create in the end. But for me, I'm going to go head onto my personal blog here and choose, let's say four to five blog posts so that I can use this as a demonstration. So firstly at AureliusChin.com, you'll see this blog. I'm just going to select a few random ones, but at the same time, I want to create a theme out of this. So self-help is the theme. Uh, we've got five habits to build self-discipline working from home. Let's see what else we've got. We've got obstacles here and five ways to get out of a slump working from home. Let's see what else we've got here. Nine things I wish I knew. So these are a few things that I want to use as a demo. All right, so going to each one, this is the full post as you can see. What I'm going to do is take the actual URL sitting on my browser address bar and copy it. And going back to designer, what you do is you enter each individual URL like that, fetch it, it's going to basically compile it and import that piece of content. Once it has fetch, you can see it's sitting here. The next thing you're going to wanna do is enter the next one. So it gives you another field to add the next blog post. So this one here as well, paste it in, fetch, rinse and repeat for all the remaining blog posts you wanna add. Okay, with all the URLs I've already added, the next thing you're going to wanna do as well is click on next. Now from here, this is kind of the fun stage, I guess, where you pick a template. They do have a range of templates on the lifetime access plan. If you do have a designer pro account, uh, it's the upgraded version. You do get more templates. So that's just as a side note, it's not essential. You still get the functionalities. If you do wanna create one from scratch or use one of their pre-existing templates, it's good enough. And you can see here some of the things that the industries that it's in, but it's not locked into that. It's not fixed. You can always add your own images anyway. Before this demo, as you saw, I already created one earlier and this is the template that I used. What you can do is either preview it or use it right away. I'm just going to use it right away. And this is the next thing you'll see. It's simply the designer editor. And right away, you can edit anything that you see on the screen here. So let's say the title, which is obviously something that you wanna change. I'm gonna call this self-help 101. And it's simply a matter of just clicking what you want in terms of the elements. And then if you do wanna change a particular font style or the font size, you can see in this bar here, we've got uh, size 72 at the moment. We can just highlight that and select what we want, 18. That's of course very small, 48. Now, one of the things I'm not sure why, they you can't enter in a custom number here, but if you do look on this left side, you can choose a size based on the font size pixels. So let's say 70, or we can choose something larger, like 100, just something that fits the canvas there. So I can even go a bit higher at 110 pixels. Once you're happy with the size, and of course you can also change the actual text style. At the moment it's using Oswald, but they do have some uh, built-in Google fonts that you can use. So do browse through there, depending on your brand, your style. But I'm gonna leave it as is. The next thing you can do is to also drag it where you actually want it. So I've just clicked that and I'm dragging it where I want it. All right, so let's say you want it in the middle, you can do so like that. So just a matter of clicking, dragging. You'll also see some other text here. This is meant to be the slogan or the subtitle of the ebook, it's not necessary. Let's say you don't even want this element, just click it and there's a little bin icon where you can actually delete it. So you're left with that. We've got the author name. If you do want to put your name or some sort of pen name, I'll just use my name right here. Now, if you do want to change the actual background of the title page, you just select this and click choose a background image for this page. 
And from there, it's going to bring up this media manager where you can drag any image you want, perhaps something from unsplash.com, which are free stock images you can use, or you can select an image from your computer using that option. But that's how you customize the background of the title if you want to do that. One side note is that Designer isn't 100% perfect. Of course, it's gonna compile what it can, but in terms of the formatting and how it's arranged, it may not appear like the way you want it to look. So in that case, that's where the finer tweaks and adjustments can be made. So let's say this piece of uh, heading here, this appears on all the, um, uh, all the pages. You can actually change this to whatever your book title is. So self-help. 101 is what's this called. And looking down, you've also got the footer where you can actually put some sort of link if you want to your site or some other resource. Highlight the text and then choose the link icon. You can actually specify a URL. So once your ebook is compiled, anyone who reads this, they can click on whatever links available at the footer of your ebook. So let's move down. We can see the formatting. It's pretty much formatted everything correctly for me using a heading. If you do want to change a particular heading and the style, of course, same thing, just highlight it. Uh, you know, use some of these features that are available here. Or as you can see, I just changed the font style. Or again, look on the left side where you're given a bit more uh, flexibility in terms of the sizes and the text right here. Alignment's also available if you want to center it like that. It'll take effect on all the headings like that. So it's just a matter of fine tuning everything. There's quite a big white space here. What we can do is to move this up. So clicking this move element up, it'll bring that particular element up and you just move the remaining elements up as well. Uh, I know you can drag and drop it like that. That's another way. So you can see what I did, I just simply dragged and drop, and that's how easy it is to actually use Designer. Now, one thing to note with Designer, and as I noted before, it's not 100% perfect. So if you are going to import blog posts, you're going to have those links that you may have put in to actual blog posts, like related reading. And this is obviously taken from my blog. And you can see some of the wordings like this, comment below, we don't actually need those things. so we're going to have to edit these and delete it. And we can delete everything else that's not relevant to what we're going to put in this ebook. Now, if you scroll all the way down, there is an extra kind of featured page. This is what they call a back page or back page content where you can add additional content, perhaps even promote some other offer if you do want to use this space. So it stands out as, as you can see the main content or the template and the style is all pretty consistent but if you have a page that looks like this makes it pop and that's kind of what you want to use to highlight some type of offer or maybe a piece of content as you can see what i did was i copied and pasted one of these sections into this to make it stand out more however it is optional and you don't need to use it if you don't want to use it just click delete page and that's all gone let's say you make a mistake all you need to do is just click the undo button and that'll bring up the last change or edit that you made. You can also redo what you did, but let's go and undo and that's it. So everything else is pretty straightforward. If you've used Microsoft Word or any other editor or documenting processor, then this the steps are pretty easy. If you've also used Canva, this kind of interface will also be familiar for you. Now, the other options that Designer offers, if you go to settings, you can actually change the size of your ebook. So let's say you're going to print this out or you want this available in A4 size. So those who do download your ebook can actually print it in the right size. You can also select landscape. So A4 landscape side. So it's a bit wider depending on what content you have. Perhaps you have some graphs and all that and that's kind of what you want to take into account. Now, a few other settings that you may want to consider is to enable autosave. So make sure that's on so in case something happens to your browser or it shuts down, your computer shuts down itself, then it won't save it. So you want to make sure you turn that on. You also have things like uh, page numbering. Do you want to enable it? If you click on, then it'll have the page number there. And then you can format the text style for that. So let's say I want to use 
this Arvo font instead. I can change it like that. So let's go back. The other thing is that you can also enable headers and footers. So let's say you don't even want these headers and footers. You can disable it like that. So this is all you see. Some other features of Designer, if you want to add some other elements and components, which they call, you can also use this by clicking the plus icon, import content, uh, cover page, a new page, back page. You can add other pages to your existing ebook if you want to. You can also add images too. So let's say a media piece, like an image. You can do so like that by dragging this particular component where you want it. So let's say I want it right there in between. And now we can add an image. All right, so I've uploaded and selected an image there. And as you can see, it's inserted right there. You can repeat for whatever other images you want to add to your ebook. If you are satisfied with all the edits that you've made with the ebook, all you need to do is just click publish. Now this window will pop up, give it a name, the author, a description, and the most popular format to save an ebook is in PDF format. If you do want to convert it into a Kindle format so that you can put it into the Amazon Kindle Marketplace, then you do need to upgrade. So that's the little caveat there. So you do need the pro features and upgrade using that link and enable one of these. But in most cases, at least for me, I like to provide my eBooks in PDF format. Uh, you can also provide it in HTML, but I don't see why you would do that when you can just enable uh, PDF. So choose that, click export, it's going to generate the PDF. And next it'll open up in a new tab and this is the generated version of the ebook that I worked on. The next step of course is to upload this to whatever platform that you use. If it's WordPress, upload it there. If you use some sort of CMS, then use that system. If you do use some sort of shopping cart system or a course management system, upload it using that method too. So there you have it, that's designer in a nutshell and how to go about turning existing content that you may have into a professional looking ebook. If you do want lifetime access to designer, then look down in the description box where I've provided my own link. It, it is an affiliate link, so I do get a small commission out of it, but it's the link to go straight to the lifetime access page so that you can get at lifetime access instead of paying a monthly fee. So at the time of this recording, it is $27 lifetime access and if you do purchase using my link I will also share with you 300 articles that you can use and repurpose as your own you can use it in any way you want you can edit it you can use it to create your very own ebooks which is the main thing and why I'm offering this in the first place because coming up with content can be a bit cumbersome and writing content of course can be a little tedious so if you do want that bonus look down below in the description where I've provided the steps on how to go about claiming your 300 articles if you found this video helpful and valuable do give it a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already turn on notifications too so that you'll be alerted of any new videos i post up here on my channel thanks a lot for watching this video to the end i appreciate you do stick around to watch these next relevant videos to help continue growing your online business